Hi everyone, welcome to this week's episode of Fans Perspective. I'm your co-host, Mike Greco, alongside the host of the show, Steve Hatch. Uh, he's, uh, oh, oh boy. Oh, so, so, now, so now you're here? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I'm sorry, okay? So, sorry, where were you when he, I'm awake, I'm in the middle of the night, these big guys come knocking on my door looking for you. The, the, you owe uh, you owe money to a Filipino bathhouse? What? It's an addiction, man. I can't help it. All right, I'm sorry. They wanted a thousand dollars, and they were gonna kill me. So I told them I'd give them my address, meet me at my house in two hours, and I just happened to give them yours. Do you see this? It's an improvement. You look, this should be you. You look great. I couldn't look like. That. Okay. Let's stop the show. Okay. Any, on. anyways, anyways. I'll compose myself. Uh, hello, fans, and welcome to uh, Fans Perspective. Uh, I am your host, Steve Hatch, and uh, my co-host, Mike Greco. I'm going to have to deal with him after the show. Uh, but anyways, let's get down to business. I agree. Business, yes. Yeah, business. Business, all right. Anyways, uh, today's episode, we are going to be talking about factions in professional wrestling. Now, when you say faction, what, what, what do you mean? Factions, stables, group of guys... Um, factions really have a big part in wrestling. If you really go back and look at it, a lot of big storylines, a lot of guys got over simply because of their association with factions. Oh, well, it's not who you know, it's who you... Never mind, continue. Well, yes, companies use factions. They really use them to make a natural storyline, get wrestlers over. I mean, look, we've seen the NWO storyline, uh, DX, the corporation. The Four Horsemen. The Four Horsemen, really. These guys really laid the groundwork for... The, the authority. The authority, even to the present day. Factions will always be a go-to in wrestling. Uh, it's great for heels. And faces. Faces uh, as well. Not as much. Well, we're going to... The factions really... The modern factions are a lot different from the earlier factions. The first factions were really like wrestling families. Like they had the Von Erichs in uh, yes. Texas. They had the Freebirds. Freebirds. Yeah, Doc Hayes, uh, Michael P.S. Hayes. Uh, they had tag teams. Like Demolition had the three guys. Uh, Axe Smash and Crush. That's right. And they also... Uh, Stables, manager stables. It's like uh, Jimmy Hart's first family. The Heenan family. The Heenan family was big. If you look at those factions, though. The Dangerous Alliance. That's absolutely correct. And what's interesting about those factions, when you really go back and look at it, the wrestlers really didn't have a rhyme or reason. They were just guys that happened to be managed by, by a certain manager. And they would get together, like uh, with the Heenan family, for instance, you had uh, Rick Rude. Mr. Perfect. Andre, he had, Andre the Giant. Andre the Giant. He had Brooklyn Brawler at one time. Uh, the Brain Busters, Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard. That's true. And if the Dangerous Alliance, you had Steve Austin. Yes. You had Larry yeah. Zabisco. Rick Rude. Uh, Rick Rude. Oh, that's uh, another. Beautiful Bobby Eaton was part of that too at one point, I believe. Yes, he was. And the, those were really, you know, they were just kind of like, well, they're clients, so they're together. Like, if you, one of the earliest memories I do remember, too, of hearing about factions, you remember when the Macho Man first turned face and the Honky Tonk Man hit him with the guitar. If you realize the Hart Foundation, uh, yes. Jim Anvil Neidhart and Bret and Hart Bret were Hart. actually holding him. Yeah. And normally, why in the world would Bret Hart have anything to do with the Honky Tonk Man? Because they were all managed they were by, all Jimmy, by Hart. Jimmy Hart. They were all by Jimmy Hart, yeah. Now, and, you know, and, and my earliest memories, like, I, I remember more of the WCW days with the Four Horsemen. You know, he had Ric Flair on Anderson. Uh, it, the, the other two was just constantly swapped out. You know, whether it was Sid, whether it was at one point Sting, it was uh, Ole Anderson. Oh, Tully Blanchard was actually there for a while. You know, they constantly moved things around. But the, the whole point of with the, the heel factions especially, it was then who was going to be the faces that were going to team up to go against them. It really, when you have a strong face, because you always have to have a strong face, it, it's hard to sometimes get that. Like, they're beating the odds. So making a faction really helped because it's like, well, oh, I know this guy could beat Ric Flair. Well, hey, can you beat him with, can you beat Tolly Blatchard, Arn right. Emerson, and J.J. J. J. Dillon as a right. manager as well? And especially in the early days of, like, the NWA and stuff like that, it was the Four Horsemen versus, pretty much it was Dusty Rhodes and Tully Blanchard. And then it was, you know, who, who's going to be the next guys? I believe at that point, that's when the Road Warriors really hit the scene, and that was the, the, the four. Like, that was, to, to me, like, when I think of factions and, and the rivals, that was the first, like, big, you know, the horseman verse. And, and from a booking standpoint, it's great because you have these teams up and you had uh, two, two big pay-per-views were based off of factions going against each other. In the WWF, they had this Fiverr series, of course. 
and in WCW War Games. War, War Games, which is one of my favorite WCW events. Oh, yeah. I always thought every year it was, it was a different kind of concept, and you and you could swap it out. Like you know, for for a couple of the pay per views, it was uh, Colonel Parker and his state and his stable. You know, Bunkhouse Brock, uh, Terry Funk would be part of it, okay. and Dusty Rhodes, of course, would always be on the team. It seems Dusty Rhodes was on the other side of every early faction. You know, whoever was well, going against Well, he was always it. feuding with the Horsemen. And, mm -hmm. you know, we, me and Gregor are both guys from New York. We mainly grew up with WWE, but you can't talk about factions without talking about the Horsemen. What are you doing telling people where I'm from? I got Filipino Mafia guys out after me. Look at you. I want them to come after you. By the way, do me a favor. Turn your head that way a little. The shine is killing me. Oh, my goodness. Anyway. So unprofessional. But getting back to business, that was really, factions really lay the groundwork. And when you go even into the future, when we get into the mid to late 90s, the rise of wrestling was so popular, pretty much everyone was in a faction at this point. It was basically faction warfare, with the exception of probably a, a guy like Stone Cold. Who was you know, a loner. Who was a loner. And if you go to WCW, it was Goldberg. I mean, you, you know, had... I, another guy, actually, who, who never... Oh, I know we'll get into the NWO at some point. Oh, DDP. I DDP. DDP never got involved with the NWO. He's actually probably the only guy in WCW that never joined. But you even had, you even started to have, we're talking about these main event factions. You had mid-card factions like the mm -hmm. Nation of Domination. Uh, Remember their long-standing feud with the Disciples of Apocalypse. Of Apocalypse and, uh, and Los Periquas. But if you look at that, when uh, the, it, the Nation of Domination started to, started to fizzle out a little bit. And they put the rock in it. That's you know, right. And, and, and he got over it. It soared. If you if you really look at it, The Rock was was getting booed out of the arena. Yeah, die was, Rocky Die. He was nothing, and then he joins the Nation. He gets over. He takes over for the Nation, and then he had that great feud with DX. Mm -hmm. DX versus the Nation, and DX versus the Corporation. What That's, a, when the, of course, one of the epic moments is when DX comes dressed out as the Nation of Domination. Oh, you can't you can't forget that. That was his. This is Mark Henry. More than just, like, we always talk about the entertainment aspect of wrestling here on Fans Respective, besides we're just, you know, the fighting, and that memory is just one that you're always going to remember. Well, when it comes to the factions, too, the, the matches, you know, you expect, uh, again, especially when it comes to the heel, heel stables, heel factions, you know, they're going to they're gonna cheat to win. No matter what the group is, no matter what's going on, it's, they're going to cheat. Like, that's how they get over. And then you have Mega Fact, you had guys like the Corporate Ministry. That was the combines of uh, what was the time the corporation and Undertaker's ministry. You had you had the oddities as a faction, Ugh. the Job Squad in Ugh. WCW. You had Raven's Flock, Ugh. so you had these mid card guys that were See, all joining factions. Raven's Flock is a perfect example of all right. We're gonna put a guy like Raven who just came in from ECW it was a very big thing at the time. ECW, by the way, ugh. And you're going to give him a guy, all right, we're going to bring in Perry Saturn, who, Perry Saturn's a very underrated wrestler. He was very I, good I at the time. That. But then you're just going to throw in these random guys, Van Hammer. Lodi. Lodi, uh, uh, Scotty Riggs. Reese, the guy, the big guy. Reese, yeah. Who, like, they all just wore the jean shorts, and they were like, yeah, we're like right, crazy. Yeah, oh, man, we like corn. We, we like Nirvana. You know, what? you know what, though? It was over. It was really over at the time. Oh, it should have been. Gave, it should have been over before it started. I tell you this: that. it gave a lot of wrestlers paychecks that really were not going to be getting them for any other reason. Fact. <laughs> and that's you know not to insult any wrestlers who are watching who may or may not be watching, but let's just be honest, okay? Um, I'm gonna insult you. You may not want to. But yeah, I you can insult. That's just don't give my phone number. Please. Out there. What's I'm Van, gonna Van Hammer gonna show up at my front my front door someday? I'm Van Hammer. All right, bro. You know, here's the ten bucks for the pizza. Thank you. Have a nice day. You never oh, my, see Lodi at Caldors. Hey, come on, Caldors. <laughs> well, we're gonna go into our actually. We have a. We're gonna get early to our fan question, and he's gonna deal with a stable, a mid card stable though, who was very popular at the time. And this is actually a shout out to our uh, boneyard brother. Kevin Gennady, host of Hiking the Hudson, sends us. That's that's the little guy that does the mountain trials, right? Yes, he is. He uh, is a little guy, but uh, he's, he's a little guy with a big heart, <sighs> and he's got passion. He's got passion for this one faction that he's talking about. Yeah, listen, Kevin he, he, writes to me. I love the Brood. Everything from their music to the fire lined entrance to the blood baths. Not to mention two really great talents, Edge and Christian, got their start in this faction. Gangrel really taught them well. All right, what was the point of that? It was our fan question of the week. What's the question? It's a comment. It's more of a comment. He wanted to state his opinion. I gave him the form because I wanted to help his show. All right? And I want... I, I know Kevin has passion for the brood. Oh. Okay, this is... Kevin, but, Kevin better find passion for something else than commenting on my show. I'm sorry. Your our, show. Our show. I apologize. Your show. That's, that's, a, that's a laugh. 
As far as the brood goes. <laughs> Uh, no, the brood. Listen, yeah, it, it spawned. It spawned off Edge, who is a WWE Hall of Famer, Christian, who probably at some point will get in. It's fifty fifty on him. If Coco yeah, exactly, Hall, could be man, Coco that. beware. But uh, I actually have a funny story. We'll tell sometime about Coco beware. But no, but you know, Christian, who's one of the most decorated tag team champions of all time, he's the world heavyweight champion. He was an ECW champion. Yeah, I, and continental champion, cruiserweight champion. I mean, everything's there for them. It's just. I don't consider them one of the best factions ever. I, I, me personally, I don't consider one of the best factions. And we'll, we'll find them, by the way, fans, soon you'll hear our fans five and you'll know about our factions. But the Brood, I have to say, Kevin is not the only person I know that actually still remembers and likes the Brood. Well, I mean, you got to admit, they had a cool entrance. They had a cool... No, oh, no. As far as the entrance, the entrance music, the entrance, them, like he said, coming up out of the fire was great. The bloodbath was good. It got a little silly at times because, you know, it depends on who they were doing it to. You know, when they were doing it to, like, the road dog and stuff, it's like, all right, well, obviously they're feuding with the road dog. It gives, it, and it also, Edge and Christian, who guys who really didn't have a personality when they first came around, they were just floating around, it really gave them... Oh, Edge was coming out through the crowd, he was the man of mystery, he'd just go, ah, and he was crazy. Yeah, it didn't really make sense. You know, kind of like, you know, Dean like Ambrose, ah, he's crazy, you know, it's, it's kind of like early Edge. Oh, we'll be talking a lot about Dean Ambrose uh, later yes, on in will. the show, but then, and also, you had, when WCW and ECW, you know, dissolved... They had the Alliance era, and that really was a whole... We're, we're going to uh, even talk about the invasion in a future episode, but if you go back to that period in time... But if, would you consider the Alliance a faction? Absolutely. Ah. Absolutely. It was a group It was a group of guys mm-hmm. that had a purpose, that came together, and tried to take over. That's basically what All our right. generic... I'm, I'm going to agree to you know, a point You know, a lot that. of people have their own opinions on that storyline. What up? But it's no the invasion pay per view was insanely successful buy rate wise. Well, because it was something different, and people were hoping to see a lot more than what actually happened. Even though you get the the payoff of Austin turning on WWE at the end of the pay per view, but uh, shocking. The the payoff was you were hoping to see you know a different member, someone like uh, Hogan or Goldberg, even like Kevin Nash come out, but you never got well, that. We're we're gonna like I said, pretty soon in the coming weeks we are going to have a future episode based on the invasion where we where we will get into that even what more. I, I just wanted to mention the invasion and the alliance. I got something for you. What are some of your least favorite factions? Well, uh, I think we're gonna we're gonna get into that uh, pretty soon. I think we're gonna first take a commercial break. We want to talk about our fans five since they're our five five favorite factions. You're 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 gonna cut me off. Yes, I am. I'm gonna, gonna ask you. Off. I'm gonna give you gold. And okay, we're right. gonna talk about it. All right, so just no, sit no, tight. No, no. We're gonna you talk. Know, I should be the one mad at you. You have no right to say anything right now. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back after these messages uh, with our fans five. So stay tuned. Hey everybody, this is Kevin Gennady, host of Hiking the Hudson, a monthly show about the history and hiking trails throughout the Hudson Valley. You can catch new and old episodes at Facebook slash Boneyard Pro. If you have any questions or suggestions for places I should go, follow me on Twitter at GuitarGod1984. Remember, Hiking the Hudson every month on Facebook slash Boneyard Pro. See you on the trail. I don't know how many Look, times you want me to apologize. I I got this. I'll, I'll handle it just... I'm a fresh professional, so sit down. Oh, we're back. Anyways, fans, we are back, and uh, this is the time of the show for our fans five. And uh, showing that I'm a good sport, I'm going to let my co-host do his fans five first. And this is our fans five top five favorite factions. So, uh, Mr. Greco, will you uh, give, share your humble opinion Thank on you. your fans Thank five? Thank you. I appreciate the money. Hi, everybody. Mike Greco, of course, your co-host of fans uh Fans' no, perspective. Uh, cool see, I'm getting nervous and everything, you know? Of course you are. My fans five for my favorite factions this week. We're going to start off a little out of the box. And people are going to tell me I'm stupid, I'm crazy, that the show's not getting no ratings, blah, 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 whatever. All right, my number five is the No Remorse Corps from Ring of Honor. At the time, it was uh, Rocky Romero, Davey Richards, who I'm a big fan of, and Roderick Strong. Uh, during this time in ROH, there was a lot of faction warfare. You had a couple other factions, the Vulture Squad, uh, Larry Sweeney's whole group. But I felt that the No Remorse Corps at the time was one of the most over things there was. They were the tag team champions. Roderick Strong was always in one of the key matches in ROH. And it was a nice little stable, nice little group. Number four, I'm going to go with Evolution. Now, if you look at the talent that was part of this group, you had Triple H, Ric Flair. At the time, a very young Randy Orton. Very young, not young, but a very green Batista. 
and it just worked, especially for the time. They just ran rough shot over everyone. Every at some point, they had every title. They had the world heavyweight title, the intercontinental title, and the tag titles. Uh, you know, Randy Orton would eventually, you know, go off to greener pastures. They would turn on him. Same thing would happen with Batista. But as you've seen recently, they reformed. They took on another group, which I'm going to mention in a few minutes, and a couple of main event matches. Next up, I go with the Four Horsemen. Listen, there's been seven different types of Four Horsemen. My personal favorite is the group that involved Ric Flair. Oh, it's actually more than four, though, at the time. It was Ric Flair, Arn Anderson, Dean Malenko, Chris Benoit, and Mongo McMichaels. Yes, I'm a Mongo McMichaels guy. Come on, baby. It's the Horsemen's here. Probably the only Mongo McMichaels guy. I just may be, but you know, I, I, I dug it. You know, it was a little different. They were in a little out of the box with them. You know, WCW wasn't completely terrible. Well, it was. Wow. Next up, I go with the Shield. Now, some people may say they weren't around long enough. Some people may say, how do you know what they're going to become? Here's what I know. They brought up three guys. One of them is main event at WrestleMania already. Another guy is the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. And the third guy is in an, uh, some kind of important storyline every month. He's so top contender. You know, sure. Seth Rollins is the future. Roman Reigns is the future. And Dean Ambrose is too. They, they brought him up. They brought him up the right way. Slowly. They were just attacking people. Then again, they start you know getting into matches. They win the tag titles. Dean Ambrose becomes the US champ. They broke them up at the perfect time when there was nothing else left for them to accomplish as a group. And you just have one of them go off on their own way. And they did it the right way. Finally, my favorite faction is D-Generation X. Again, another group that you have two different forms. I'm going to go with the original of Shawn Michaels, Triple H, and China. And this is when Shawn Michaels and Triple H were just doing things that were out of control. I mean out of control. The gestures, the... The Christmas... Uh, the, the Christmas, <laughs> you know, and that's be funny, Shawn rest. Michaels doing this thing, and, you know, stop, stop, stop. Uh, the, the press conference. Oh, how the, the you, State you of the Union. That. Yes. And to me, it's just, it was so over the top, it was so funny, the stuff with Sergeant Slaughter. And it was just a great time in, in, for a faction. And I hate the Attitude Era. Let's get that out there now, so... You hate a lot of things, I noticed. I hate you. And I hate that's you, too. Fact. But otherwise than that, that's my fan perspective, top five. Fan well, five. Well, you know, despite the fact that I do hate you, I have to agree with a lot of those choices. Of course and you you're going to see some of them appear. Um, now I'm going to get into my fan's five favorite factions. Number five, uh, I have to go with the Four Horsemen. Uh, like I said before, I grew up mostly on WWE. So that might have been the, the Four Horsemen might have been higher if the things were different. Mm, but okay. you cannot mention the top factions of all time without mentioning the Four Horsemen. That's all I'm going to say about that. Do you have a particular... Uh... I'm going to have to go with the uh, the one that was inducted into the Hall of Fame. Okay. The uh, Ric Flair, Arn Anderson, uh, Barry Windham, I and believe. Tully. And Tully Blanchard, of course. Of course, Ole Anderson was in the original. And J.J. Dillon was a great manager to tie it all together. Uh, my number four favorite faction is the Hart Foundation. Specifically, Ugh. the 97 Hart Foundation, the anti-America, pro-Canada Heart Foundation, where the whole family, including Brian Pillman, was involved. I mean, you have to admit, there, it's, it, was, it was a good storyline. Bret Hart was healed, it was different, and they were over. And it was something yep. that hadn't been done in wrestling. You go to Canada and there are huge faces, you go to the United States and there are huge heels. It was, it was completely different. It separated two countries. It made people hate, it made, made two countries hate each other over wrestling. Two countries that have no reason to hate each yeah. other, in, in all honesty. Uh, number three, D-Generation X. And I have to favor, I like all uh, varieties of DX, but I, just like you, I have to favor the original D-Generation X with uh, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, China, and don't forget Ravishing Rick Rude. Yes, I did forget about him. Ravishing Rick Rude was a member, and uh, like you said, you already. what can I say that you didn't say already? They were doing everything ridiculous. They were out there. It was the beginning of the Attitude Era. They set things apart and different. Number two, the NWO. Okay, this storyline is what made me watch WCW. It was probably the only reason why I watched WCW, to be completely honest with you. Uh, the NWO dominated the landscape. It was so big that WCW even started branding themselves WCW slash NWO. They had its own pay-per-view. It was broken apart. The NWO was so successful, it was broken apart into two different NWOs. Yep. There was NWO Hollywood and NWO Wolfpack. Now, at that time, it was getting a little stale, but you cannot argue how fresh the NWO, and how different it was. I really thought it was WWF trying to take over WCW. 
You're an my, idiot. My so number of course one, you would pick that. I'm sorry. Continue. I was a kid. An idiot. Continue. My number one faction, and a lot of people are surprised this is my number one. Not that they're a bad faction, but Evolution. I was just always a huge fan of Evolution. I mean, I love when they all had the belts. They dominated. It was the perfect heel faction, I believe. It was the new Four Horsemen. I even loved, I even marked out when they came back to Wrestle the Shield. When it was the, then they had those excellent six-man tags. They may have had the two pay-per-views. And Evolution is, we have dominated the landscape for years. It, it set up, like I said, it set up a strong heel. And it, I just am a huge Triple H and Evolution fan to the end. And uh, that will be my uh, top five fans five. I'm going to get a lot of slack for this one, but I'm going to disagree with you on the NWO. You, really, you, don't, you didn't even have the NWO. Was I, exactly. And the reason why is I felt when it first started with Hogan Hall and Nash, great idea. They threw in uh, uh, the, the, the giant, Paul White, Big Show, whatever you want to call him. Fine. Even when you got to Xbox. Uh, uh, Six Pac. Xbox? Xbox. Yeah. I, <laughs> we talked about this last time. If you ever correct me again, Listen, you your have no scout right. you have, is the point, last thing you got to worry no about. Right. You have no right, right to, to say anything at this anyway, point. Anyway, right? but I felt that once they got to there is when they should have stopped. They started letting too many people into it. It was Everyone was a member of the NWO. I was a member. You were a member. Probably. This guy sitting out here was a member. It didn't matter. It was like, hey, you, you like wrestling? Yeah, here's a black and white t-shirt. You're in the NWO now. Oh, okay, great. I think the NWO could be one faction, the only faction that probably could be in the top factions and the least favorite faction. Yes, you agreed. Know, when you water, water it down. And uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we are going to talk about least favorite fan factions. So uh, stay NWO. tuned. We'll oh, right finally, back. we'll talk about what yes, I wanted to talk yes. about? Listen, I told you, I'm the host, and I run the, I run the <sighs> day out, okay? You just sit back. I'm a little mad at you, all right? So oh, you need to just get over to it. Big deal. Stay tuned. You should live the life I live. I can't handle this editing anymore. This is completely frustrating. How much more work do I have to do? Good grief. <coughs> oh. oh, I didn't hear you come in. Hi, everyone. My name is John Harder. Wanting you to check out the Hard Wage Q Podcasting Network, courtesy of the thejohnharder.com. Check out great podcasts such as The Hard Way, Nick and John Live in New Jersey, The Hardcore BF Podcast, and so much more. You can find us again, thejohnharder.com, or on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher. Hard Wage Q. Be there. And we are back with Fans Respective. And uh, thank you, John. Uh, Darren Harder from the Hardway Podcast. Of course, he is our sponsor for the Fans 5. Thank you, John. Uh, thank you for once again sponsoring us. And listen to the Hardway Podcast on his network, which you can find the link on our Boneyard Facebook page. And uh, Are you done? Uh, can, can we finally do something I want to do on the show? We always we, What you want to do. Yes, what I want to do. Well, I, I don't, like I said, I don't like you, but it's good for the show what you have. So... Be my guest. Thank you. And by the way, once again, for the Hard Way Podcast, yes. That's, I'm, I'm going to take the blame. You've had me so flustered on this show. I'm going to take the blame for not mentioning it, that it was our sponsor for the Fans 5. But thank you, John. Great guy. Great interviews. Check it out, folks. So, for the second time today, what are some of your least favorite factions? Well, I think when you get into least favorite, like, lame factions, you got to talk about, like, the Job Squad. Oh. Um, Dungeon of Doom. Oh, I man. think it has to be a <laughs> the, lot Yeti. Of, the, the Yeti. The Yeti. That's all I have to the say. Are, like, humping they're, humping they're, humping they have Hogan in this. It's a little odd. I believe that was uh, Halloween. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Halloween Havoc. I want to say 95. I think you're right on that Folks, one. check this out. It's literally the big show and this guy, the Yeti, who looked like a mummy old. It was actually Ron Reese. From was it? Reese from Raven's Flock. See? Yes. All right. See, you know, once in a while you bring something to the show. I can't really complain. But they do this hug thing with Hogan in the middle. It's like, ah. I didn't quite understand it. It's true. I didn't. Just, pull- just horrible. They put Earthquake. They called him the shark. <laughs> Brutus Beefcake was the Zodiac. Oh, man. Just, it was, it was so bad. How about the Union? I remember if you watch, actually, the Legends of Wrestling Roundtable, 
Um, Mankind, actually, they had an episode on factions, and yes, Mankind even brings up Mick Foley, talks about, well, you know, the Union was a pretty bad faction. Of course, it was Mick Foley, Ken Shamrock, Shamrock Tess, Tess, and The Big Show. And The Big Show, yes. And I get what they were trying to do. It was kind of like, you know... They the, were the four guys broken apart from the corporation. From the corporation, right. And, and it, it kind of made sense. And in a way, the one person that really benefited most from that was Test. Because it actually uh, started going into the Test Stephanie storyline. And that's how Test started uh, battling Shane McMahon and it led to the whole marriage thing. But other than that, it was just, hey, we're going to walk out here with two by fours and we're so cool. Another faction that didn't work out, JBL's cabinet. Oh, God. That was uh, Orlando Jordan and the Bashams, that was, and that was, And look. And Jillian Hall with a mole. And also, and also ah, before ah. Jillian Hall, the other woman, Amy. Amy. Amy, yeah, I, I forget what her last <laughs> yeah. name is. Yes, yes. But uh, I, I, I have, I have an absolute terrible one. Even though it makes oh you really God, laugh. Let's see it. The Mean Street Posse. <laughs> these guys were. It, it was a. It was. It should have been the the jobber faction because all these guys did every week would take beatings from every random different they were person. The, they were like the random thugs for the corporation. For the cor- yeah, yeah. I, but you know what? As bad as a gimmick as it was, it was kind of funny the when you think music. about it. Yeah, the, the theme, theme music <laughs> always gets over. I think it cops. Like it has like that cops without the words kind of theme music. It does. And uh, it was just a, a joke. And don't forget, uh, they had Edge and Vicky Guerrero's one, La Familia. La Familia. That was a little odd. That was, yeah. I mean, you had Edge, you had uh, the Edgeheads, uh, Chavo Guerrero. The Edgeheads being Zack Ryder and uh, Kurt, Hawkins. Kurt Hawkins, yes. But you know what? At least they won the tag titles. Uh, Chavo, I don't know if he won the uh, Cruiserweight title. He was an ECW league. champion. Mm, I'm going to disagree with you on that. Uh, I think he had broken... Uh, this was before ECW. Oh, the, the the family was before ECW, actually. Oh, they had the big Spanish guy. He was bald. Cam Neely? Oh, yes, Bam Neely. Bam Neely, Bam Neely. Yes, I remember that. So, But who would you say was the most unsuccessful faction? Like, as they had high hopes for him, or just, just crap? Yeah, just... As, as they came in, as you thought they were going to be everything, and it just I'm, didn't work. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring one up, and it's actually going to bring into our more modern-day factions. And a lot of people, I brought this up to a lot of people before the show, and they disagree with me. I think that the Nexus was absolute trash. Um, you had, look, Daniel Bryan was good, but he didn't last. I think Wade he got, Barrett... He got is, kicked out after the first night. He got fired. Yeah, I mean, we had Ryback, but he was Skip Sheffield, and he wasn't in it for a while either. I think it was just a bunch of random too. guys. It was random bums. It was hot one night. Antonio Tarver. It was hot one night. Wade Barrett is just was not... He's not that good. <laughs> I'm not just saying has got me laughing, by the way. Good job, guys. <laughs> Wade, In my opinion, Wade Barrett was just not that good. And I'm so glad that he did not win the title because it would have been another Miz title reign and we would have been talking about him like we did in our last episode. Actually, it was thanks to... Uh, it was actually after Randy Orton faced Wade Barrett that uh, Miz cashes in. That's true. I remember that. Yes. So what do you, what do you, what do you think? About uh, your absolute most disappointing, ah. worst faction. I'm gonna most. I'm gonna probably say, and people are gonna kill me for this. The the NWO. NW, well, at the end. After the original three combined, anything after that to me just wasn't good. I, I like I said, I, I understand what you're saying. I understand the impact they had it's, on the Monday Night War and everything. But I'm, I just don't feel the NWO is as big as a deal as people made them out to I be. I think once it broke up into two, that was really. But kind even of before weird. that, like, I, I, again, you started bringing in certain guys. See, I, I, I get Scott Virgil. Norton. Like, oh, exactly. Virgil. Like, you bring in IRS. Uh, I'm Stevie sorry. Ray. Michael P. Wall Street, whatever the hell he Stevie was there. Stevie Ray. Stevie Ray. Uh, Horace Hogan. Oh, my God. Oh, what a surprise. Brutus Beefcake winds up in another faction or something with Hulk Hogan. You know, uh, uh, what was he? Uh, the the Disciple. The Disciple. The Disciple. I remember, I was, I, remember, I, remember I was legitimately shocked when I heard that that was Brutus Beefcake. Conan. Yeah. You know, it just, it kept growing and it was just, it was so bad. You know, and then, of course, because Vince McMahon is doing his whole thing in, you know, WWF, WWE, or WWF Time WWE, uh, of, of feuding with Austin... And starting the corporation, so Eric Bischoff has to now join the the NWO, and it just it didn't make sense. It never made sense. I actually really liked when they brought in the Million Dollar Man. 
That made sense because it had that he was another WWF guy and he legitimately could yes. bankroll it because of his character. Exactly, and you could have you could have fed off of that. You could have fed off of the million dollar man is bringing all of these guys in. You know, then it was all right. Macho Man's gonna join. All right, now this guy's gonna join. That guy's gonna join. It was just, it became too much. I, I you know what I do agree with that. Now I'm gonna get in. We're gonna now we're gonna get into more modern day factions because factions are still a large part. Uh, of wrestling, if you watch Raw every week, you will see the Authority is still like you know running. Oh things. yeah, uh, it's it's funny because people don't even realize though the Authority, Stephanie and Triple H are in charge. Back in two thousand, the McMahon Helmsley uh, regime. regime. Yes, it's the same. It's, it's a, yes. literally the same guys. Yeah, it's and funny. It, it just and you had you had uh, Legacy was a faction around that. Oh, oh yeah, Orton, uh, Ted DiBiase Jr., Cody Rhodes, and. Manu. Manu. Well, he didn't. I. I, when, I think more more people think of Legacy. I think of the three. The three, yeah. Because Manu I, wasn't there with them very long. Uh, Straight Edge Society. That was one time where CM Punk, I think, was really go, you know, firing shots at you know when he. I remember the Elimination Chamber when he was. Uh, Cutting a promo in the middle of the elimination chamber. Well, no, uh, uh, that was yes, and that's when uh, he he actually they uh, Orton attacked him, I think, before he even got out, and they do the whole thing where he was still part of the match, and he actually eliminates Orton. That sets them up for their WrestleMania 27 match. Really good match. But uh, what I think of even more with Punk is uh, at the Royal Rumble. When he's when he's in the yes. ring and he's eliminating people awesome. and he's going on the microphone and he's just going how he could save them as they're walking down he's they're all eliminating them and then of course Triple H comes in and does what he normally does to CM Punk and that's another episode in itself. Well, before I, I we got to talk if we're going to talk modern day factions, I, I have one a little earlier though than what you have. There. All right, before we get into who I'm going to mention, but you say it really quick and then we'll Team Angle. Team Angle, I, I like them. Charlie Haas, they Charlie Haas, Shelton Benjamin, and Kurt Angle. All uh, great technical uh, college wrestlers. Kurt Angle, of course, an Olympic gold medalist. But the other two guys were great technical wrestlers. You know, uh, it's unfortunate. The actual original plan wasn't supposed to be Triple uh, Shelton Benjamin. It was supposed to be Charlie Haas's brother Russ. Yeah. And Russ unfortunately had a heart a heart condition. He passed away. But uh, it was it was great. They they were tag I champs, did. WWE champ. You know, they they were feuding with Brock Lesnar for a while. It was it was a a good strong stable, and it was it wasn't based off character. It was based off ability. I agree. And if you want to go to guys, the I think this is the best modern day faction. And I think I'm going to call this faction Nexus done right. The Shield. Okay, the Shield is the per in my opinion the perfect example of what you do with a faction. You took three guys. It was hot. They didn't keep adding a million guys to it. Right. They they came in. They were unknowns. They were from NXT, kind of like what the Shield, what Nexus was trying to do. Yes. Uh, well, these, NXT. That's the original you took, Nexus. You took two guys who the internet fans love, and you took one guy who they like Roman Reigns, who they know is gonna, who they say is going to be the next big star. Right. And then you you build them up. They attack guys. They have matches. They are in, um, indestructible. You have Evolution reunite, and the Shield just wipes them out. Yep. And then they turn them, like you mentioned earlier, they turn them at the perfect time. Yep. When they knew these guys can legitimately main event, and look, you got three legitimate main eventers out of it yep. because you did it right and perfect. You don't have like Nexus where all these guys are friggin' jobbers or released. What I talked about one of the other show on one of our other fans' perspectives, which you can always go back and watch on our Boneyard Productions YouTube channel, uh, it, it has to be natural. It has to just feel right. So what they did with the Shield is they left them as heels as long as possible. They were heels, I believe, for more than... Two years, I think. About a year and a half. Okay, and then right before... And if you look at it, they weren't really faces that long. No. They were only faces. They, they really... But they got... They were. They did that natural. They got over as faces because they were just... They were They were so awesome in their role. When, when they debuted, they debuted. They come out during uh, a match between CM Punk, John Cena, and Ryback. It was triple threat at Survivor Series. That's right. And they put right back to the table. They attack uh, John Cena. And they just build it up. They left them as heels as long as they could be heels. Because at that point, the fans are just going nuts about them. Like, they want them to come out and put someone through, triple power bomb someone through a table. Then what they do is, all right, well, now we're going to make you faces. So they face Kane and the Outlaws at WrestleMania. They face, as you mentioned, Evolution. And it just worked. And it got to the point of, well, there's nothing else we could do with these guys. Somebody has to turn. And I... And it's, I'm an ROH guy. I've said it for a very long time. I always felt that Seth Rollins was the best one of the three. 
And, and now, seeing now, I have to agree with that. And don't get me wrong, Dean Ambrose is, is a great character. He's I a think, stable of Monday Night Raw. I think all three of them are going to be are going to be future champions. I I agree. Uh, that's just my you opinion. Know. Dean Ambrose, I think, is great. I think Roman Reigns is great. Yes. And Seth Rollins will have a lot more reigns. And you know, one day they're going to reunite these guys, and the crowd is going to flip out. Well, they did they did the four way recently with it was the three of them and Randy Orton. And they do the triple power bomb through the table, which everybody knew was going to happen at some point. Yeah. And the funniest part of that is Seth Rollins going like this and getting all into it, and then both of them just punching him in the face. Like it, it's going to have its moments, but I agree with you. At some point, hey, they're going to reunite. If rumors are true at this coming WrestleMania, we may see a triple threat with all three of them. Like, I, the fans are clamoring for that. I'd have no issue with that. I really, you know, a lot hey, of people look, kill Roman Reigns. The, the problem they've had with Roman Reigns is they try to shove him down your throat. Now that they're starting to let it be a little more organic, again, just let it happen naturally, he's getting cheered. He's getting over. You know, you, you got to realize that at some point, this guy is going to be the heavyweight champion of the world. And what's great is that nowadays, they focus on a lot of part-time stars and stuff. But these three guys, these are three yes. future guys. And these fans, they legitimately can main event over yep. the, these part-time stars. Yes. And, uh, and within, if you look at this year, this year alone, ju- just this year alone, I believe in... Basically, every pay-per-view, one of them three have been in the main events. I think and I think that they... And you know what else? I actually... I really wanted to mention this and we got off track, but their feud with the Wyatts. The Wyatts was oh, another yeah. great action. Oh, yeah. It worked and uh, it worked out perfect because that was a match that was at uh, Elimination Chamber last year. That was uh, one of the matches. And it was... Uh, actually, no. I'm sorry. Yes, it was a little yeah, well, chamber. These six man matches were carrying pay per views. Yes, they, they were awesome to watch. They were yep. they were awesome to watch. And uh, I mean, nowadays the Wyatts have broken up, the Shields have broken up. The biggest faction really nowadays is not even in WWE. It's the Bullet Club. Because you hear, oh. I don't really watch Japanese wrestling too much. I'll be honest. I'll give that one of those. But one of these, no, you're, you're yeah, not going to do it. Well, All right. regardless, you cannot yeah. argue how over these guys are. Yeah, the Bullet Club is something extraordinary right now, and it's. It's the most over. It's pro- it might be the most over thing in professional wrestling. Like, and they're not even in the WWE. No, they're not. They're New Japan Pro Wrestling, and I mean you got guys not like AJ way. Styles, uh, uh, the Young Bucks, uh, CWA, Carl Anderson, uh, Doc Gallows, uh, Kenny Omega. Uh, there's a couple guys I know I'm, I'm leaving out, but it's it's a bit. It's it's was the biggest the, thing. Finn right Balor now. was in them, right? Finn Balor was basically what AJ Styles is now. Finn Balor was the original. Uh, leader of the, you could say the leader. I don't know oh, if wow, they, I didn't know that, but I knew he was in it. But uh, Bal- Balor was there before AJ Styles, I believe, got there, and it's everybody loves it. Everybody, everybody wants to see them, especially the the young bucks are have a big thing to do with with, with that. But I, I can't disagree with you. They're the most over faction there is right now in wrestling. Absolutely. Well, uh, I think this about wraps up this week for uh, factions. We got a great episode coming up, uh, and the next uh, edition is the special SummerSlam edition. Yeah, SummerSlam's right around the corner. And, uh, you know, like you said, keep uh, sending in your fan comments and uh, your own, you know, questions. Uh, keep liking the Boneyard Productions Facebook no, no, and the no, YouTube no. channel. Can, can the guy that sent the comment this week not give us any more comments? Just keep watch, hiking his trails. You can like, watch Hiking the Hudson as well on our you can watch channel. it. I just don't want them talking on my show, any, our show anymore. Our show. Look, I'll, I'll make the decisions on that. And, of course, you can always send us on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at Heavenly Hatch. And, uh, at Real Mike Greco. That's right, Real Mike Greco. Secret Agent 84 on Instagram. Michael A. Greco on Facebook. Hashtag poo poo. Hashtag all hail. Hashtag PR guy is still nowhere to be found. He's PR guy is missing. What can you say? Uh, I, I, I just want to say one more thing, too. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean for your head to get shaved. It's a good look, though. You look great. Uh, thank you. You're an ugly guy, but your head looks great. From one ugly guy to another. Uh, my name is Steve Hatch, and uh, thank you for watching Fans Respect. See you later, folks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>